talking and let me do a check on the sound. All right. Can you hear me on the internet? Test, 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 test. Just need to speak up now. Okay. We are live. Um, no. First off, I would like to welcome you to what I think arguably is probably the finest open water course in the world. We've got spectacular temperature, perfect water temperature. It's going to be an awesome weekend. And I personally, uh, my name is Mark McCaw. I'm your meat referee this weekend. I also live here. I've lived here for 25 years. So if you need a good restaurant or anywhere where to go, I'm the guy. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming here. It's uh, always a pleasure to see everyone. So let's go through some things. I had a couple of announcements. Crip and Mile is on Saturday night. Registration for that closes at 2 o'clock on Saturday. So if you have the interest in doing that, it's a mile on uh, Saturday night. Um, let's see. With that, why don't we go ahead and get started. Let me tell you, the, a competition like this takes a lot of coordination. The area has been doing it for about 25 plus years. Uh, some of the people involved is, of course, number one is Greg Cross, where Greg is. Hey. Hey, here. <laughs> right behind him is Connie Henshaw and Don Henshaw, the local host team coaches. <laughs> Tons of volunteers from the Gulf Coast Swim Team. Um, from the county, we have our safety officers, Nancy Apperson, she's here from Lee County Parks and Recreation. Another <laughs> Huge partner pulling all the kayakers, all the, uh, the safety folk on the water. Uh, Jeff Belke, Gary Owen, and the staff of Lee County Sports Authority, they help us financially support this uh, event. Uh, Lee, County <laughs> Lee County Sheriff's Department will be on the water tomorrow. San Carlos Cicero Fire Rescue will be on the, fire, on the, on the water tomorrow. Uh, and of course, we couldn't make this happen at all without the wonderful help and support of the Miramar Lakes Beach and Golf Club staff and residents. So, so I want to give them a big thanks. Now, a couple people to introduce to you that are important. Well, tomorrow's races are the 10Ks. We'll start off with the women's race, and that will be run by Matt Wilson. Matt, where are you? Stand up, Matt. <laughs> and then the next 10K will start at 10:30, uh, I think it is. No. And uh, that will, that race will be run by Melissa Hellerman Bing. Uh, our juries for this weekend, and I haven't had a chance to run them all down, so I hope they'll say yes. But uh, our athlete rep will be Holly Anderson, Haley Anderson. Our official representative, our official representative for the jury will be Pam Wilson. Pam, where are you? There she is. And our coaches, I'd like to ask uh, Catherine Vogt, Josh White, and Coach Bill Rhodes, if those three people would mind serving on the jury if we have to have one for the entire weekend, that'd be great. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Also, some key officials uh, in the room are your administrative officials, which is uh, Mr. Bob Mank. Dick <laughs> Brewer, wherever Dick Brewer is in the back. Dick Brewer. Tomorrow, we will be live at usaswimming.org. And I don't know if, while, if last year, if you got on the website, took a look at the drone uh, videos that we had from the last competition last year, which is incredible. Uh, they'll be back as well. So we'll be live on USBSwimming.org tomorrow with the drone. Uh, that will also be on uh, Sunday as well for the podcast. So we are using USA Swimming FEMA and FEMA rules, which are pretty much the same for open water, as far as for the swimming part of it goes anyway. So your normal gear and apparel, the only real difference is that you are allowed to wear a suit that goes not beyond the ankle. Other than that, they're the same thing that you've been wearing in the, suit, in the uh, pool. Uh, you will be asked tomorrow morning to identify the uh, manufacturer and model of the suit that you're going to be declaring to, to swim. So be prepared to do that. Also be prepared to be sure to bring your ID with you when you check in in the morning. The other things that you're going to be looking for there is going to make sure that your nails are already cut. We'll have tools there for you to do so, but you've got to clip your nails back. Uh, other than that, there'll be no crafts on the water as far as uh, we don't have any uh, escort crafts for the race tomorrow or on Sunday. Um, interference and strip slipstream stream is, is fine. You're more than welcome to draft each other. Please don't continually play with the person's feet in front of you. You'll probably get my whistle tweaking at you if you do. Uh, interference, we understand basically in open water swimming, you cannot in, uh, uh, interfere or impede the progress of another swimmer. So swimming across the top of somebody is not a good thing. That's going to get you a yellow flag. Uh, 
Uh, as you know, just like in soccer, two yellows is a red and you're out. So uh, <coughs> fighting on the course is absolutely not tolerated. That's an automatic out. Um, just a couple of little things to be sure some of you that are newer to this, be sure you don't push off the bottom. Uh, you are allowed to stand on the bottom, but you cannot push off the bottom. Do not in any way hold on to your feet stick and do not put your hands on the, uh, on the feeding station to gain support. Those are all things that will cause you to get, to, get to get out of the water. So just FYI. Other than that, you know, we know there's contact in open water swimming. We expect that, but just keep it to, to a reasonable level and don't impede your other, uh, other swimmers with progress and everything is going to be awesome. Uh, we do have a feeding station for the 10K, uh, and everyone that hopefully you had a chance to get out there and uh, do it, uh, can see it. That's the same one that was there last year, almost the, almost in the exact same spot. That is a unit that to USA Swimming has bought and moves from the national championship to the national championship. It's a very, very, uh, no longer are we going to have a feeding station that look like this when all the coaches go to one side. That's good. Uh, we ask you not to wear jewelry, watches. Uh, let's see. We want to be sure you report tomorrow morning. We do start at 8 o'clock. So be sure you report no later, no less than 45 minutes prior to that. Um, you'll get your you can get your pre-race number tonight if you choose to. That's fine, or you can wait till in the morning. In the morning, when you come in, you'll need your ID. We'll uh, get you uh, give you a card that you've been registered. That will get you your chips. We put on the officials will help you put the chips on. Make sure you get it comfortable as you like it, and you are well willing to uh, able to tape it if you so choose. Um, Pre-race meeting will be 15 minutes in the tent just on the beach for the beach race. And uh, we'll start introduction to athletes five minutes prior to the start. Those of you who have done this before, basically you'll walk out of the tent as you're being introduced. We'd like for you to show us the numbers that are on the back of your hand so that we can get it on the video. And uh, what that does is helps us, if there's a real close race, use, use that as part of the information we use to try to determine the order of that. Okay. Uh, start and finish procedure. This is an in-water start and an in-water finish. We're going to be using a rope. The plan is, at this point in time, uh, I think we're going to just tie it to the pier and tie it off at an angle. Your first turn is going to be to the, to the left as you're facing the horse, which will be buoy number one. So uh, we'll stretch out at the 100 foot um, cord, and uh, you do need to have one hand touching that cord when you start the race. I heard last year some unnamed person touched and started with their foot, so we missed that somehow. So please, this year, start with one hand touching the the rope not the uh, withdrawal procedure, we're out there for your safety, number one. That's the number one thing we're out there for. If you have a problem, please wave at us. We'll come to you immediately. There are safety craft all over the water, plus there's the sheriff, plus there's emergency guard people on the water. We have the uh, safety crew out there, and we're with us some more later. Lots of kayaks, a lot of paddle boards. You'll find them all over the place. So if you need help, for goodness sakes, let us know something. Okay? Um, protest, protest would come to me if for some reason there's something that you uh, have an issue with, just come up we'll take care of that. Uh, if you by chance withdraw on another part of the lake, um, be sure to get up on the pier and, and let us know that you're there. If somehow or another you got out, we can see you. If by chance you get out on the beach, please go to the finish area so that we know that you're there and that you're okay. Please don't just get in your car and leave the, leave the area and set us into a panic. So that's not a challenge to do that either, by the way. So. Um, inclement weather contingencies. Uh, for some reason or other, we do have air horns. Uh, the air horn will be a start, but you get multiple blasts of an air horn. That will be us clearing the water. At that point, you need to go to the closest boat, closest kayak, kayak, and we'll remove you from the water. I don't know. The forecast is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know the reason that'll happen. But if for some reason that uh, be aware that that's, that's what will happen. If at the start, if something happens that makes it an unfair start, you may hear at that point multiple blasts plus multiple whistles. Please stop and we'll restart the race. That would only happen just at the beginning if some oddball sound went off or something that happened, crew starts and the other one goes. Uh, the recognition ceremony uh, and the awards will be after the uh, men's 10K completion. Uh, we talked about 7 to 7.45 is registration tomorrow morning with photo ID. 7.45 is the uh, inspection instructions. 7.55 is roll call, 8 o'clock start. Uh, men's is 9.30 to 10.15 is the registration with your ID. 10.15 is the uh, uh, briefing, the final briefing in the tent. 10.25 will be roll call and, uh, for the announcer, and 10.35 will start the men's race. Uh, we already used a chip timing, which is, uh, those of you who've this meeting before, it's the same chips we've used in the past. I uh, learn each wrist. Uh, Jason Moody from the God of Timing is the one that does all that. They also do all the video backup. So we also have manual backup, but I've never ever had to use it for the work of the chaser. So 
Uh, there will be a live uh, PA updates and uh, webcast, as well as we will have announcements on the water, announcements on the shore. Uh, my plan is to, if there is a disqualification or if there's a yellow flag or whatever, and my plan is to announce that over the PA system so coaches know that uh, about your summer. Don't be controlled. You can refer to your flyer about that. Uh, but don't be controlled. is here with you know, USADA. You can visit the USADA site for new information on that. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, we have award ceremonies for the top eight and then plus uh, 18 and under. With that, is anybody any questions as far as what we talked about so far? Oh, so where are you going to be, Mark? I will be on land for the, uh, tomorrow's races. Any other questions? Will the course be open for the match at the moment? Yeah, I don't think so. Like, Craig, that's going to be, what do you think? Do you have a time for that? I think we have time for that. Yeah. <coughs> we'll probably take a break. There's going to be some transitions between our safety people and Stand up, sir. Yeah, they're going to need, we'll probably have time to open course because our people that have been on the water are going to need a break to use the rest of the drink. So I would say at least 20 minutes, 20 minutes to a half hour in between. And, and what time in the morning for the girls again? Okay, uh, so we are not getting sunlight to seven, so it's so right, right around seven. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, seven oh five. I, I cycle through here. It's a little dark at seven oh five. But the course has to be clear. The girls have to be. Clear. The course has to be completely clear before we send anybody out there now. And watch your start times. So Don't get too far out there and you get, you know, not be about to come back to your time and start your race. Does the pool, the pool be open at Florida Gulf Coast at all tomorrow morning? Uh, they, they do open tomorrow at 8. We actually have a time from 10 to 12 done. We have four lanes, is that correct? Okay. Okay. Uh, 10 to 12? 10 to, we have four lanes for us. Yeah, they can go in at any time. You can go in any time. They open at 8. Okay. And I just tell me what, what they do. Thanks. Any other questions? The stuff we've covered so far? With that, I'm going to kick it over to the best uh, race director in the country, Mr. Greg Cross. Thank you. Um, First of all, welcome to Lee County, Miramar Lakes. Looking around and seeing so many faces that have been coming here for years and seeing lots of new faces. This is just, this is great. In fact, we've got good weather this year and um, it's just, it's, we're off to a good start. Before we really get started, we have some special guests this year. Uh, USA Swimming allowed us to open the event up this year to international swimmers. And just take a few moments to recognize them. Uh, we have our Brazilian contingent here. Everybody from Brazil. <laughs> Portugal. Portugal. Tomorrow we have an open water clinic at 3 o'clock. 
Uh, is that right? It's 3 o'clock, right? Alex is running it. I'm sure if anybody would like to assist or help Alex or whatever, uh, just talk to him. We also have, um, the, as, as uh, Mark mentioned, we have the Crippen Mile Saturday night. That's a swim we do annually uh, for, for Elevation Foundation. Uh, participation, we'd love to have you in that. But we also have a very special event. We have what's called a buddy swim. We have uh, we match up some of our athletes. We have some little kids that are trying open water out for the first time. We have a little about, it's supposed to be an 800 yard course that's closer to 500 yards. And uh, a lot of the athletes volunteer and we match you up with these kids. And this was the second year we had it. It's fantastic. And any of you that would like to participate in that, uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, the Crippen Mile, once again, is Saturday night. Check for registration in Saturday at 2. You can register starting tomorrow for it on site. But we do have to shut the registration. And for those competing in the event, the registration is only $10. And all the money goes to the Elevation Foundation. So, uh, and then we have another clinic uh, prior to that, 3 o'clock on Saturday, with some of our national team athletes. Um, before I get more into the meat of things, I want to thank our swim team. The organization you see, most people know me, I'm not the most, I got a lot of great ideas, but in terms of organization, I'm not the best at it. <laughs> this organization is by my parents, and more specifically, Connie Henshaw and Maria Medina have taken this to another level, and I want to thank them uh, it's, it's the, for the job they've done with this and everything else. So thank you very much. Mentioned, already mentioned all the people that are involved. One other group that's, that's helping us out tomorrow is called uh, USAR. It's an urban search and rescue team. They're out there. Uh, they're volunteering their time. If you get a chance to say hi to those guys, they'll be out there in Zodiacs. So you're, you're, I, I, I have to believe this is one of the safest races you'll ever see. Thanks to the bond. Thanks to all these people that give us their time. Um, as far as uh, registration, Mark's going over registration checking. It's five laps. You've been on the course. The course, the distance of the course was, was on today. We are, uh, we are tweaking some buoys. We had some buoys move around. There will, do we have a map of the course? Yes. I think we have one. You've been out. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're familiar with the course, the start will be right off the pier right here. It is five laps around a 2,000 meter course. Feed stations right here. There will be a buoy anchored in somewhat in line with this buoy. It's a lime green buoy that you will keep on your left shoulder at the finish, so you'll have to go around. Um, we replaced this orange buoy here with a larger orange buoy, um, but it's in the exact same spot as you were on the course earlier today. And any questions about the course? I suggest you know you get a check. If you checked it today, you check the the, um, the finish they're in, get in the water, check it again tomorrow. Maybe some things sometimes get jostled around, but do give it a check in the morning. Water temperature, last time I checked, was 78. Yes? Well, the feeding station was quite off course this morning. But what what we do is, we're going to adjust, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the buoys. Since we can't really move the feed station, we're going to adjust the buoys. Yeah, all right. You were, several people mentioned that to us. All right, so we'll, it will be we'll, more we're going to do that in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions about, as far as the course goes, thank you. Uh, there have been some questions about alligators. Uh, there are no alligators. The water buckets has killed all the alligators. But you have good eyes. The sharks came in and ate the water buckets. I'm ready to roll. Hey, and just a couple things on the uh, course. The, uh, the, uh, the green buoy is a left turn, but if, during the, if somebody you get over there, you can pass on either side, except at the finish. The finish you must pass on your left side. Does that make kind of sense? It should be pretty much in line with these two buoys. That's the goal. And that should be the feeding station about five yards off the course. So it should be the ability of passage. So you have two left turns. You have one here, one left shoulder turn, and then at the finish you have this left shoulder turn. All the rest, those, the, all the all the yellow ones, are all right shoulder turns. Okay. So 
going around this way, obviously. And finish shoot. You can see, so you must pass this on the left. You cannot finish outside of the lane lines. They're like full lane lines. Okay, so you must stay within the inside of them. And then, of course, as you already know, the first person to touch. So this is the new TV station. Well, it's the same TV station. We'll be getting out of this segment here. Oh! <laughs> that's, because that's been in the water for two days, that ramp has gotten very slippery, especially going down. So I suggest you wear shoes and be pretty aware of that. We do have a camera on it, so we <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, he is. Yes. 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 So the uh, the one inside the race within that should be no problem. We'll allow one skier per um, per athlete in the race. Uh, we'll leave some there checking your feeding hole. That, that'll be checked for each, uh, for each race unless you leave it on the feeding station. And we put a buoy right here. What color is that? Like a swarm. That one is like a dark red. Just to try to make sure you don't, in case you happen to run into it, it's right there. But the plenty of room to feed, uh, 60 full feet here, so there should be no problem at all. But this is the new section which you do this out farther in the water, so the ramp is almost here as steep as it was last year. But you're still about, depending on how tall you are, somewhere about five feet to get to the feeding station, so you will get wet to get out there. Any questions on that? This is the finished platform, and uh, it's the same one we've had for years and years. Uh, it is backed by wood on the back side of this, so uh, you can exit the water here. Be aware there are some rocks and stuff here, that's not too bad. Okay. The feeding station, by the way, that water on the on the feeding side is pretty deep. I don't think most of you can even touch the bottom. So it's just it's a really easy to leave the video without having to worry about hitting the bottom. With that, uh, Nancy Appleton's here with the County Park Direct, and I'll turn it over to her. Can everybody see me here? We'll have a light blue tent set up for the first aid tent. San Carlos Fire and Rescue will be there under, underneath the tent. Um, we'll have a total of 17 lifeguards on the course. They'll be placed in zones throughout. So um, if we see a swimmer that might be struggling, uh, let's say zone one, we'll alert zone two, keep your eye on number 154, or whatever. Zone two will pass it to zone three, and they'll go all the way around. So the lifeguards will not follow the swimmers. They won't leave their zones. Um, it works better this way. We make sure that the entire course is covered the entire time. Um, if somebody gets in trouble and you know does need assistance, they'll grab a hold of the kayak. That's when um, each craft has a orange flag and they'll wave the orange flag. We have two ranger boats on site along with the sheriffs, along with the cert team. So the closest motorboat or power boat near the uh, kayak will will come and we'll get them out to get you out of the water. Hopefully that won't happen. Okay, um, I have hospital locations. It'll be under that blue tent if anybody you know needs urgent care. The, the hospital will be a cooler there with beverages. Um, other than that, I think we got it all under control thanks to our, our wonderful staff, the lifeguards. Every one of them had a lot of experience, and <coughs> we couldn't do it without them. Any questions for Nancy? <coughs> Just a couple of little things. I mean, I'm sure you know this, but Florida Sun is very strong. So be sure to use the block. Uh, those of you that are on shore or on the feeding station, you're in full sun the whole time. It's a, a roughly a two hour race tomorrow. So uh, dress accordingly. Uh, restrooms are there are there will be and I believe there are some um, porta potties out there, right? No. So all the restrooms are up the path there, okay. at yeah. the top of the you see the path up towards the uh, up towards the restaurant. There's a locker room there and everything. Uh, where is uh, Usada operate that? Uh, there, yes, they're over um, near the where the pool area restrooms are. Yeah, over there. there that, you know where we have to be in that one year that restaurant on the park. Workout fitness center is right there. So you're going to access that by going out yeah, the yeah, down the street. Yeah, they're, they're, you saw people will meet and take them over there. Well, we want the coaches to know. But basically, they're by the health department. Yes. Yes. So that's where that's where the athletes will be in the drug testing. Any other questions about the course, the race, disqualifications, fouls, anything else of that nature? With that, I'm going to introduce Bryce Alzer, our uh, water program today.
real quick, wanted to run through the selections um, that are taking place this weekend. Pena World Juniors will be selected off this weekend. The 18-19 division and the 16-17 division will be picked off at 10K. The 14-15 division will be picked off at 5K. Um, and this is age of December 31st, 2016. That's FINA's rule. Uh, national team, essentially the men will be picked. It will be the top four American finishers um, who are not on the Open Water Olympic team. And then the top five female American finishers who are on the Olympic team will make the national team. National junior team will be selected off of uh, FINA World Junior Team members who are 18 and under. And then also the remaining position will be filled by and finish order from the 10K results. Um, until six men and six women are on the national junior team. Um, national junior team is age of 18 and under as of September 1st of this year. Um, please go to usaswimming.org and read the selection criteria, which are posted. That's all I have. Thank you. If you wasn't here when we were when we passed it, I would like you to, um, to meet uh, Jason Moody with Regatta Timing. He's the one doing all the chip timing, the video backup, and all that good stuff. Great. So, so just a couple of quick points. Uh, so for this race, we have both chip timing and video review. Uh, so there are quite a number of cameras on the finish structure. One thing is when you put on your, um, your bands tomorrow, um, keep in mind you can select how tight or loose you want it, uh, but you have to finish with both bands. So you have a chip on both, both wrists, just make sure that you finish with it. Um, some people have asked about taping, that's fine if you want to tape uh, over your bracelet, that's, that's no problem. But the relevant thing is that if you lose one during the race, you do need to uh, see one of the officials and get a replacement chip. If that happens to you, that is one of the uh, official referee folks. There's four on the water. All four of them will have extra chips. Any other questions? Any other questions? We'll uh, see everyone in the morning. And good luck, all the